What's up, YouTube? It's for the franchise guy coming at you again with a brand new episode of your Philadelphia Phillies franchise mode. Taking on the Dodgers, starting this episode off in the ALC, or not the ALCS, the NLCS. That's which one we're in. I mean, we're doing, we're doing okay. We have a two-run lead. We're instantly doing. Oh, never mind. As soon as I start to praise this team, they let me down. All right, we have a one-run lead now. Peterson, do play. All right, we're moving. Walker Beeler still on that mound right there. Medina holding his own so far. All right, core out of it. Five innings through. Walk, fly out, line out. An unfortunate pop out, walk, pop up. There we go. Way to go, Adonis. All right, Dylan Florio now in. Ground out. Come on, we gotta get gotta get an insurance run. Insurance run. No. Two men on, no out, no insurance run right there. Pollock, strikeout, caught stealing, single, caught stealing again. Okay. So, can we hold on to this lead right here? It's all I ask for, just holding on to the lead. I mean, are we going to go to a pitching change? We're going to go to a pitching change right here. Pitching change. We're going to go. We got Norris. Uh, we're going to go down to a, uh, Victor Arano. Arano been solid for us all year. Sack bunt, walk, all right, come on, we got, oh no, that's not what we wanted right there, no, come on, Victor. That's unfortunate, that's not what you want to see right there, down by three, Joe Kelly comes in, Arano, I mean, your day's done, dude, like, you, you had your shot, Edward Ramos, double, walk, walk. Line out, scored, flying out. This is not what we wanted. Kenley Jansen's now in. Oh, this game's all but done. Like, there's no, yeah, we lost 6-3. to three. Not what you want to see right there. You can't be having your set of guys blowing, blowing leads like that. You know, Nola's in now. Nola a bit shaky in his first, uh, first appearance of the season, especially in the playoffs. But let's see if he can, you know, bounce back and have a better one. He did allow that run run right there. It's all right. We're still early. It's only one, it's only one run. All right, here we go. I mean, Julio Urias, eh, holding his own. Only has allowed one hit so far through three innings. Now three hits through four, and we're tied back up, baby. Let's go. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate. We had to, we had to swing a Nola. It's been unfortunate. I mean. Solar rumor. And you know how rumors are in MLB. They change every day. Every day rumors change, especially when it comes to like free agency rumors. Like right now, the big free agency buzz rumor is that the Padres are going to trade for Mookie Betts and it's going to require two of their young players that they currently have on their major league roster and one of their top prospects. So it's going to pretty much be like Chris Paddock and I don't even know who else, but be like Paddock. Another young guy and like Mackenzie Gore, Fernando Tatis. That's what it'd be like right there. But we do win game number two. But the big rumor I did see though is that the DH, the DH, yes, the DH is coming to the National League in by chance by the year 2021. And I mean, you saw right there just a little bit ago we had Aaron Nola up bases. Load was base load or was it two men on? Either or. We had a situation where Nola was up with two outs in the inning and runners in scoring position, and we had to swing with him because it was too early in the, in the game to take him out. But, I mean, we need a race. We can't pull a race in the fourth inning. That's just not how things are done, dude. But, it's all right. Figure it out. Figure out how we get this done. Oh, that's not how we get this done. We don't let up two run home. Come on, Eflin, dude. Oh, Eflin, no, dude, you were amazing all year. Oh, man, oh, no, come on, Frankie. Three home runs that inning, five runs. We are down four runs now. Oh, no, it just got even worse. Eight runs in the past two innings. Like, this game's over with. What do we do? Do we just throw Frankie Montas to the Wolves? It's more or less what we're doing right there. Look at that. Four walks that inning. Four walks. Kershaw still in the game right now. Oh my lord. 6-12. 8-12. Alright. We're putting up a fight. 
I mean, still down by four. All right, nine, twelve, ten to twelve. O okay, I mean, I don't think we're going to put two more runs across the board, but that was a six-run seventh inning. And right now, I'm just not trusting the bullpen at all. I, I, have, I have zero faith in this bullpen. Look at that. Look at that right there. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? You know, in the past, what? Three innings, we've given up 15 runs. Like, come on, bullpen. What are we doing here? That's the big thing I gotta we gotta worry about going into the next season. Because if our bullpen continues, there's no way we're gonna get out of this uh, get out of this round. But all right, you know, one run, pitching change, Quackenbush. All right, and there we go. We lose 18 to 11. Gosh, that is some horrifying numbers right there. 18 to 11, 29 runs were scored in game number three. So game number four. I mean, we're down two to one in the series. Can we can we make it two two? Maybe Verlander's on the mound. Verlander has some uh, experience against the Dodgers. Wink, wink. I mean, you can tell we're not playing at home right there, as uh, they hit a home run against them. I actually don't know if that has to do with anything. But Verlander only allowed the one run so far, doing his dandest really to keep us in this game. Pentamaida opposing him, sub-2 ERA, Verlander, getting that ERA down from over 5. I mean, this game is pretty much, if we score another one, I'm pretty sure we're going to win it. Like, Verlander is just mowing down the Dodgers right now. Look at that. I mean, he's that ERA just goes down every batter it's coming down. I mean, Caleb Ferguson now in. I mean, can we... Can we do something? No. All right. On to the eighth. Verlander gets out of the inning. Eight strong. Only one run allowed on the home run. No. All right. In the ninth. Now Verlander still on the mound. Come on, baby. The tenth inning. Verlander. Pinch hitter. Fly out. Single. Ground out. All right. Ten innings of Verlander. Can we get a? Can we get a run? No. Come on. Verlander for 11 innings, a walk, a strikeout, a single. Nah, that's it, dude. There's no way. Like, I don't trust this bullpen to get out. Sir Anthony, can you hold him off? Pinch runner, walk, bases juiced, and a run scores. Try to get the double play there. Couldn't get the double play. I mean, we're down 3-1. to one. Verlander went over 10 innings that game, and he couldn't even get it done. Like That's how dominant Verlander was that game. But we're down 3-1 yet again in the NLCS. It's game five. I mean, last year we lost to the Rockies, a team that the Phillies beat in 2009 to make it to the World Series. Was it the World Series in 09 they beat the Rockies? Maybe that's the ALDS. It was one or the other. It was either the NLDS or the NLCS. They beat the Rockies in 09. In 08, they beat the Dodgers. So, I mean... Look at that, just not going Philly's way. Ugh, just you hate to see it. You really do hate to see it. And... Oh boy, Hamels taking the mound yet again. I mean, Hamels took, what, the mound for game four against the Cubbies? In, you know, the, in the last series. But... I, I don't know if this team has it. I don't know if this team has the ability to... I don't know. Oh boy. This team is just heartbreaking to watch. It really is heartbreaking to watch this team play sometimes. Like, I mean, it's just like the real life plays at this point. This team is so much better than what they actually are. And I don't, I don't look at that. Hamill's a 14-year vet right there, taking off Ross Stripling, who's a four-year vet. I mean, just the way life goes. Taking a look at our manager right here. He's doing his thing. I mean, look at our lineup right now. Harper, Rumito, Alvarez, Hoskins, Bruce, Baum, Kingery, Hazley, Hamels. I mean, this, this is the lineup that got us here to begin with. Ross Stripling in 32 starts. He's 10-7, so he's not a great pitcher. 
we should be able to get to him. Hopefully get to him early. I mean, if, if we do, we're just going to be playing catch up the entire time against this team. But I'm um, thinking, I'm thinking about still for next season and for MLB 20 when that does come out. Because it, the more I'm looking at it for what's coming out, the more it looks like I'm going to restart the franchise over. I mean, I want to put in a bunch of rules too because this franchise got away from us real fast. I want to make it a more realistic franchise because this, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I was thinking about it. This franchise stopped being realistic when we traded for Jordan Alvarez. Like, that's, that's just what it is, you know? But, so I'm working at a whole bunch of new rules. So by the time MLB 20 The Show does drop, these rules will be ready so we can restart our franchise. With the new rosters, I mean, we'll also, there's also been a whole bunch of new stuff too, coming with the new Phillies franchise when that does eventually come out. But there's no point of getting to that right now. I mean, Hamill's on the mound dealing so far, and you know, two outs in the inning, and Stripling goes one, two, three as Bomb grounds out to second base. So Hamill's now one, two count to. Josh Dobson, big number 23 right there, and he's going to strike him out for the first out of the inning. Dobson has some words to say. One out in the inning, here comes Max Muncy, and Max Muncy strikes out, swinging right there on that 93 mile hour pitch by Hamels. So back to back K's for the veteran lefty pitcher. Now to Adam Hazley, and Hazley singles up to center. 4 8, one out single on the top of the third. So. Up next, Hamels. Hamels goes down swing that 83 mile an hour off speed pitch. He's got a bit of a grimace right there. So he knows he should put some wood on that ball. 1 2 count now, and another strikeout for Cole Hamels as Cole Hamels gets Ross Stripling the pitcher to strike out for the second out of the bottom of the third inning. Hamels, a bit of a smile right there. He's like, hey, you got me, I got you. So training strikeouts, those pitches are in 1 2 count, and Chris Taylor goes down swing on that 93 mile an hour fastball. So, Amel's under control so far through four, or through three, I should say. Top of the fourth, we have a two-out single by none other than Reese Hoskins. And Hoskins, you know, safely at first. Up next, we have Jay Bruce, and Jay Bruce sends that one deep to the left field in the night. That one's going to one-hop the wall. Hoskins on his horse. Hoskins not quick enough to round a third. Bruce barely getting in the second in time as he slides in safely. Can't capitalize. Now on the bottom of the fourth with... Two outs. We got Hamels pitching it. We got Kingery ranging back. It's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Cole Hamels and the Phillies. So this game is moving along as no one has scored and Hamels has yet to allow a hit to the Dodgers. Top of the fifth now. It's two outs in the inning and Stripling forcing Hamels to pop out yet again. So another 1 2 3 inning for the Dodgers pitcher. Look at that. Not what you want to see right there. Donson, Muncy, Peterson all do up. 3-2 count to Max Muncy. And Max Muncy ropes this one left field. That one's going to get down. Left field gets there quickly. Fires it in. And that will be the Dodgers' first hit of the game with one out. Jock Peterson up now. Knuckle curveball is in the hair for the strikeout. And, you know, Hamels dealing so far to that. Only one hit so far through four and two-thirds innings. And... Right there, as the last man goes down, so does Austin Barnes. Goes down swinging. So back-to-back -back punch outs for Hamels. You know, he has one hit the Dodgers so far this game, and the Phillies are cruising. Looks like this, whoever team gets a run across the board first will be victorious, as Alvarez sends that one deep to right. Can of corn, though, as the right footer puts gets under it. And it's going to be another 1-2-3 inning for Ross Stripling. Stripling out, giving us a lot more you know, of abrasive than we thought we were going to be against him. But Hamels gets Stripling to go down yet again on the punch out. So it's two strikeouts to him. Ross Stripling's one against Hamels. Alec Baum now, two outs in the inning, and can he get a hit? No, he cannot. Stripling has locked the Phillies down for the past two innings in a row, as he has yet to allow a hit since, what is it, the fourth inning? The fifth inning, he hasn't allowed a hit since. 1-2 count now, and that's going to be a deep fly ball to right field. 
Alvarez turns and watches that baby sail over the wall. Corey Seager, yeah, Kyle's younger brother, the better of the two Seegers, sent that one deep to right field. Management not looking too happy right there. Pitching coach looks like he's on the bench right there, chirping at the manager, saying he should have taken Hamels out this inning. But, you know, manager felt good about his starter. And the Hamels gets tagged for the first run of the game right there. And the way these pitchers are dueling, that might be the only run of the game that the Dodgers need to win. But 388 foot home run right there for Corey Seager. You now his brother Kyle, a trade target of the Phillies in real life. Now, one, two, count to Cody Bellinger. And Bellinger, no, he did not. Alvarez turns and watches. And that one's in the bullpen. Oh, no, he didn't. Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager, back to back bombs. That is not what you wanted to see right there. Cole Hamels, what happened, my man? Oh, no, please tell me. Please tell me that those aren't going to be the only runs of the game. Because if that's how the Phillies lose this season, I mean, they had a great, great regular season, this Phillies team did. And for them to go out like this, that is just upsetting to say the least. All right, now he's still out there. Get the Muncy go down swinging. Lefty on lefty crime right there on that fastball. So Hamels... Still showing some grit right there. 1-1 one, one count to Jock Peterson. And Jock Peterson, no. Peterson can't hit lefties. He did not just do that. And he did. Three home runs in the inning. No. Come on, Cole, buddy. That is one of the most heartbreaking things I think I have ever seen in this game. Cole Hamels dominated... The Dodgers orders through six and a third innings. And in the seventh inning, Cole Hamels allowed not one, not two, but three home runs between Corey Seager, Cody Bellinger, and Jock Peterson. Hamels, probably in his last game as a Philly, you know, walks off the mound, his head held low. That is not the performance he wanted. He knows he's better than that. And in will come Edubre Ramos with his 9 ERA and his 1 inning pitch. Raiders are batting over 1,000 against Ramos. And the manager just says, get him out. Get this one batter out. You have one job, Edubre. 1-2 count and Barnes pops it up. Hoskins over and he catches it right there. But the damage is done. Pinch hitting for Ramos as Kevin Biggio came over midseason from the Blue Jays. 2-2 count, and Biggio's going to roll one over. Diving first baseman can't stop him. Biggio beats it out right there in his 70, was that 6 speed, 76, 78 speed. Top of the 8 still. Harper sends that one to left. And hey, we are cooking right now with two hits. And... Head coach for the Dodgers right there. I mean, he's seeing up from his pitcher. He's going to the bullpen. That's not what you want to see. You don't want a fresh bullpen coming in. You wanted you wanted that starters out there, but Joe Kelly, who was not a lot of single run, has not allowed a hit actually either in his two games this postseason. All right, Ken. Is this hopefully this is the wrong mistake hopefully Joe Kelly comes out here throws a flat pitch but doesn't matter he gets the out of the inning and in will come Victor Arano in his zero ERA even even though he definitely allowed a home run left is batting 400 or is batting 111 against them and first batter up he sees a single to center field right there Hazley gets there quickly fires that one in and that'll be a leadoff single for number eight right there of the Dodgers. Two outs in the end, two two count, and that's gonna be a deep fly ball. Did Corey Seeger do it again? And he did. No way Corey Seeger seals the fate on the Philly season with his second home run of the game. Victor Arano was lights out last season and this season. But Seeger 
comes out of nowhere, has a great game, and just puts the nail in the coffin right there. His second home run of the game. And in will come Kenley Jansen. They are not playing around. They have a five-run lead. This is not a save situation. But it doesn't matter. Kenley is in. 1-1 one, one count with two outs in the inning. And Jay Bruce will get that one down in the gap. Bruce hustling. We'll get into second base standing right there with two out in the inning. All right, Bruce probably also in his last game with the Phillies. Alec Baum now. Baum rolls this one over. Donaldson charges. Donaldson fires the first. And it'll be overthrown. No, Baum goes on to second. And there's a miscommunication. Baum ends up back at first. No. No, that was an error right there. Baum should have ended up at second, and Bruce should have scored. But a miscommunication on the base pass leads to a Scott Kingery deep fly out to center, and the LA Dodgers are your NL champions. They defeat the Phillies in five games, and oh boy, that is heartbreaking for these Phillies fans to watch. The Phillies had a great season, a 100 plus game win season. A bunch of Hall of Famers on this team. You know, you got, you know, I don't know who I'm going think about. You got Verlander. You got Harper as a future Hall of Famer. I mean, all of these great young players, great veteran players, and they just don't, they just don't cut it. For whatever reason, they just couldn't get it done. So through two seasons, the Phillies have yet to make it past the NLCS. See right here, two hits, two home runs, three RBIs for Corey Seager as his bat alone sealed the fate for the Phillies. That is not what you want to see from here in Philadelphia. Phillies fans are heartbroken as back-to-back -back years, you know, they've just gone home empty in October. You know, you got to think they finally broke the drought of playoff misses in what, 2019? And now in 2020, they're still in the same spot. You know, is the manager the problem? Is, you know, the rotation the problem? Is the bullpen the problem? Who knows? But if you guys like this episode, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. If you guys missed any episodes, check the playlist down below. And check them on YouTube. Peace out. Rock on. And most definitely stay super classy, I guess.